Do you know what shears I hate more than any other shear in the world? And it's not the ones you think. <laughs> it's the ones that were sent to me today to sharpen. Buy another sharpener with a problem. So, watch this, and I'm going to show you how to ramp thinning shears and texturizing shears. Ramping is what this is about. This is the shear. I hate worse than any shear in the world. It is just, <laughs> has a lot of problems and it's hard to fix. It's a Centrex shear, and I imagine there's others like it, and it's got a lot of space between the teeth, and little skinny teeth. And here's what the problem is. You close them. Well, first of all, you see how much metal's been taken off over the years sharpening it. But you close them and it catches. And no matter what you do to the screw, or what you do to the shears, you cannot fix it. It's just, it's a problem. And if you try to bend the blade, which is what the sharpener asked me to do, here is an example. This isn't the same shear, but it's similar. You see that? It's got the same wide teeth. You try to bend the blade and... <laughs> so, let's learn about ramping. And I have two shears here. Hopefully I can fix one, if not both. I have less expectations for this one. This is an Olivia Garden um, 35 tooth. Um, and you see with this one, when you close it, it catches. And usually when you have a problem with them catching, it's right down here. So let's look at these closer, and I'll show you how I fix them. I don't bend them. Oh, it's got a couple of places to catch. Okay. We're going to go the easiest solution first and then go to the hard one. Let's look at this one. This is going to be the one that's going to be the easiest one to fix. I have perm paper out here because that's what I test them with. I'm going to take it apart and see if there's anything wonky going on with a screw. For those of you not in the United States you don't know what wonky means, it means weird and crazy and something just not right. Sometimes, and there are, ex there are some opportunities here, I can put an extra washer in here and it'll fix the problem. Probably won't happen today, but this probably won't fix it, but always do the simplest things first, and sometimes just an extra washer will take care of the problem. Let me see what his edge looks like is sharpening. I don't see anything alarming there. No, it's still catching. Still catching. So let me show you the ramping. There's two ways to ramp. And I really don't need to take them apart. Well, I was editing the video, as you see. <laughs> and the footage on that first the Olivia Garden shear was wonderful and somehow I either erased it or didn't get it but it came out perfect with no effort. Believe me, I know I didn't have it witnessed on the video but I did this ramping thing you're going to see me do next and just one stroke it closed beautiful and I'm sorry somehow it'll never happen again. But let's go on and watch the rest of the video and see what I'm doing with these hated shears. And you'll see, I'm, I think these shears did it to me on purpose, made this thing totally erase. Because it just, this one doesn't come out as easy as the last one. So if, let's see if these shears will do the same. If I can get away with the same ease. So I'm laying this on my stone. And you see how I've got the handle here? That handle kind of gives me an idea of what my angle should be on this stone because I'm ramping it down. Um, this is what I call a ramped ride line. And I'm pulling it straight across. I'm not even bothering to wet the stone. Oh, gee. Nope, it's still catching. Still catching a little bit. Let me take a look at that tooth. I think we have a broken tooth here. Let's take a look at these teeth. 
And there's ways around fixing these teeth. Yeah, these back teeth are really messed up. I'm gonna let you look at them. See how that one's broken? And that second one's really messed up. Oh, so no one's gonna notice it if those don't cut at all. So I'm gonna use my diamond and I'm going to take it in aggressively. Maybe all three of those back ones. And I'm also going to put another washer in here. Because it doesn't hurt to do that. And the sharpener that sent these to me, he said he'd struggled with them a long time. And in the past, I struggled with them a long time. I've heard other sharpeners talk about ramping, and I thought they were crazy, and um, then as time went on, I started experimenting with ramping. Uh, when I went to the Eichert factory and trained with Casper, he wasn't a big hot one on ramping. He was um, more into making this a blunter angle, and that usually took care of it. I don't think those Eichert scissors were ramped. Okay, that washer looks pretty good, but I think I'm going to stick another washer on there just to be certain. So I still wasn't doing much in ramping unless I was desperate. Kind of liked when I was at the International Beauty Shears Association, IBSA. Um, Neil was there, and he showed me his way of ramping, which I liked the way where you, you use that width of the, of the handle to figure out how much of an angle to ramp. I was told by one of the factories that makes our shears that they ramp theirs at 15 degrees. Well, it's hard to guess what 15 degrees is. So I like Neil's technique of using that as a gauge. And that was kind of what I was already doing as a gauge um, without consciously realizing that's what I was doing. And that has, has worked for me. Now when you put a washer in there, and especially if you're one that you're not sure if it fits, make sure that it's all the way under that head of that screw. I've had places where we were sharpening and the shears just weren't cutting right and we couldn't figure out what was going on and then we realized the washer was protruding um, behind that screw and then that caused all the problems and once we fixed that it was it took care of all the problems with that shear. Sometimes it's the simplest things and the simplest things usually have to do with a pivot screw. So I'm making sure that washer is kind of poked down in there as I tighten this. Extra washer, the ramping, and then I damaged actually these these back blades, I mean these back teeth do not cut at all now the way I ramp this. And I did a really severe ramping. It's working. I'm going to put some side pressure on it, and it still works. Now, let's see if it actually cuts. I want to make it just a tad tighter. Now, I know these teeth won't cut, but let's go ahead and give it a whirl anyway. It only cuts if I put a little side pressure on it, and when I put side pressure on it, one of the teeth is catching again. Which one's catching? This one right here, which is still one of those broken teeth. So let's ramp that one some more. And I have seen incidences where you could actually go in there and take that tooth out, kind of with your Dremel or something. But I think that looks a little obvious. If I can just take this down so it doesn't catch at all, that would be super. It's wanting to catch a little bit yet. Man, that's a lot better. I see it pulls when I cut back here. Now I'm thinking if this, if 
this is bent out a little bit more. That might be better. Part of it, we've just lost so much blade here. These don't take out much hair anyway. I think I'm going to leave it alone. When less is more, see it does tend to fold hair a little bit. But you want to get them to where they at least cut, and if they're not happy with your work, they don't pay you, but then that's much better than going so far to try to make them work that you break them and then now you have to buy them a new pair. So just know when to stop on it. And I think I'm at a stopping off place and that's as good as I want to try to make these shears. Now if these belonged to me, I might keep working just for the fun of it. Um, if they weren't happy with it and they knew it wasn't my fault, you could always take these as a trade-in. The way to really learn how to, <laughs> if, if you're one of those sharpeners that like to, let me put my magnifier up before it gets dirty. Um, if you're one of those sharpeners that really like to, um, you know, do crazy things like uh, welding handles back on or, you know, remaking shears, <laughs> yeah, the, take trade-ins and then you can do whatever you want to with your own shears. But if these belong to somebody else, um, uh, as these do, um, I think you need to do as much as you can without going to the point where you end up like this and you've got to replace the shears. Um, these shears are very dear to me because um, it wasn't me that broke them, but it's um, Fred Mueller who's now passed away and he's a, um, his son is now sharpening. And um, he gave these to me, and I love these not only for the example of why you don't bend these thinning shears, but also this has got a crazy screw, and I often use that as examples for crazy screws. So if you come for training, I have a whole box of these type of unusual screws. So I hope that was helpful to you. I wish someone had put a video about how to ramp thinning shears back in the day because there was probably a lot of shears that I walked away from. Uh, I never went so far as to try to do this, <laughs> but there was probably a lot of shears I walked away from and shears that I couldn't tell my sharpeners how to fix that today I know how. And this is always a growing journey. So um, subscribe, give me ideas of things that you know, and um, you know we're all in this sharpening business together. So I'm just glad that uh, so many sharpeners over the years have been happy to share with me and I'm delighted to share with you.